Hello, my dear friends. Good to see you again. And I would like to thank you for your patience. Well, here we are. We already did half of the book. This is part 6A, shot on location. Everyone, look at the pictures. What do you see? Ah, some posters of famous movies. For example, we have The Godfather, John Wick, The Mask, The Silence of the Lambs, and Shall We Dance? All right, so I guess you know what we're going to talk about. Yes, movies. Now, I have some questions for you. The first question is, how often do you watch a movie? What is the name of your favorite movie? Which genre of movie do you like the most? For example, action, adventure, science fiction. Do you prefer to watch movies at home or at the movie theater? What is the name of the worst movie you have ever watched? And do you like movies that are based on true events? Is your country good at making movies? Do you want to work in movies industry, for example, as an actor, director? And do you think watching movies is a waste of time? And as always, you can add your own questions. Now, there's one thing left for you to do. What is it? Speak. That was a very good discussion. Now, part one, reading. Everybody, look at these pictures. Look at these locations. Very good. Do they remind you of any movies or TV series you have seen? Very good. Write down your ideas. Now, I need you to read the article and complete it with a past participle from the list. Okay, we have these verbs over here. So, just read it, and as you read it, fill in the blanks with the past participle. This is your gig. Time for me to wait. A few minutes later. Okay, you're back. Now, let's do it together. You are standing in the place where... Yeah. A. High Clare Castle, near Newbury in Berkshire, UK, United Kingdom. The castle has been owned by the Carnarvon family since 1679, and the Earl and Countess Carnarvon currently live there. In 2010, movie director Julian Fellows, a close friend of the family, was planning a new TV series about an aristocratic family and their servants during the early 20th century. While he was staying at Highclere Castle, he realized that it would be the perfect place to set his historical drama, and the castle was transformed into Downtown Abbey, the home of the fictional Crowley family. The series was a huge success, and it has been sold all over the world. Both the interior and exterior scenes were shot in and around the castle itself. All right. In the second season of the TV series, the castle is used as a hospital during the First World War. These scenes are based on a real-life event. In 1914, Lady Amina Carnarvon allowed soldiers who had been wounded to be taken care of the, in the castle. Taken care of in the castle. Go there. Highclere Castle and gardens are open to the public during the Easter holidays and during the summer, from July to September. It is also open on many Sundays and holidays from 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Visit the Egyptian gallery, which contains many objects brought back from his travels by Lady Amina's husband, the 5th Earl of Carnarvon, who fam famously discovered the tomb of the young pharaoh Tutankhamun, or something like that. I'm not sure. All right. The first one was okay. Let's move to the second one. I know my reading skills are, as, are not as good as yours, but at least I'm trying. I'm not saying no. B. Court Landed Alley. All right. New York City, USA. In Hollywood's version of New York City, the giant metropolis is full of secret alleys where crimes take place and criminals are chased by the police. 
In fact, the, there are hardly any alleys in New York today at all. One of the few remaining ones, Cortland Alley, has been used for almost all the alley scenes in movies and TV series that are set in New York City. Movies with scenes that were shot there include Crocodile Dundee and Men in Black 3 and TV series like Blue Bloods, Boatwork Empire, NYPD Blue and Law and Order. Go there. Thousands of tourists want to be photographed in Cortland Alley. It is on the edge of Chinatown in Manhattan between Franklin Street and Canal Street. In fact, it is a perfectly safe place to visit in real life. It is not inhibited by gangsters, but it is home for perfectly respectable businesses such as New York Table Tennis Federation Training Center. All right, not bad. So far, so good. The last one, Casa Loma, Toronto, Canada. This Gothic revival style building with a spectacular tower was designed by Canadian architect A.J. Lennox. The original owner, Sir Henley Mill Pellet, spent $3.5 million and hired 300 workers to construct the building. After three years, the castle was finally completed in 1914. Unfortunately, in 1933, the city of Toronto seized Casa Loma from Pallet for non-payment of taxes. They always do that, don't they? After several years of neglect, the castle was scheduled for demolition. But it was saved by Kiwanis Club, a service club that helps the homeless, the hungry, and the other disadvantaged people. The club still holds meetings there today. During World War II, equipment designed to find underwater enemy boats was made in the castle because of its unusual look. The castle has been used as a location in several well-known movies such as X-Men, Chicago, and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. In addition, author Eric Wilson was inspired by this building to write the novel The Lost Treasure of Casa Loma. All right, go there. Visitors are welcomed throughout the year. However, some areas of the castle may be closed to the public due to pre-booked functions. The castle is open daily from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is closed on December 25th, Christmas Day, and guided garden tours are available from may through october all right very good you did great now i need you to read the article again and answer the questions with a if it's high clare castle b if it's courtland alley or c if it's casa loma these are the questions take your time and do it yourself a few moments later Okay, let's cover the questions together. Which place is not really as it seems in movies? Of course, B, Cortland Alley. Number two, which place has a permanent exhibition there? Of course, it's Highclere Castle. Number three, which place was used for the same thing both in real life and TV? Again, Highclere Castle. Which uh, place inspired an author to write a novel about it, Casa Loma, which place is one of the few places of its kind that still exists, B, Cortland Alley. Number six, which place is only open during holiday periods, A, Highclere Castle. Number seven, which place was taken from its owner, oh yeah, Casa Loma for taxes. And the last one, which place was used to make equipment for a war? Again, Casa Loma. You did great. Everyone, just listen. 3.31 1. A lot of movies are shot on location. Our car is being repaired today. Andy's bike has been stolen. The director died when the movie was being made. You'll be picked up at the airport by one of our staff. This bill has to be paid tomorrow. 
2. Batman Begins was directed by Christopher Nolan. All right, everyone. Now, this is the passive, B plus past participle. We somehow call it reported speech. It's the objective way of uh, talking about things or events. Now, let me explain to you. We often use the passive when it is not said, known or important, who does an action. So we have an object. Andy's bike has been stolen. Somebody has stolen Andy's bike and we don't know. Now, if you want to say who did the action, use by. We can often say things in two ways, in active or passive. All right, now what is active, what is passive? Look, Batman Begins was directed by Christopher Nolan. So the focus is more on the movie. Christopher Nolan directed Batman Be Begins in 2005. Okay, so this is the active. The focus is more on Nolan. All right. Now, we form negatives and questions in the same way as in active sentences. How? Let me show you. Some movies aren't shot on location. Is your car being repaired today? We often use the passive to talk about processes. For example, scientific processes. The water is heated to 100 degrees. Or informal writings such as newspaper reports or for example in IELTS you have to use passive voice and reported speech many buildings in the city have been damaged by the earthquake now let's master it together and I apologize if I make so many mistakes I've been teaching from morning so I can barely speak let's do it as always I have two sets of exercises for you in the first one circle the correct form, active or passive. For example, the college was built in the 18th century. All right. And in the next one, rewrite the sentences with the passive. Only use by if necessary. For example, people don't use this room very often. Okay. Now, this room isn't used very often. All right. You know the drill. Stop the video. Take your time and do it yourself. Try to use your own knowledge. Okay, if you have finished it, check your answers with your friends, put your heads together, learn from each other. And now, it's my turn. Number one, the costumes for the show are being made by hand. Number two, the landscape inspired him to write a poem. Number three, this castle hasn't been inhibited for almost a century. Number four, the director's last movie is set in, in the present. Number five, the movie will be shot in the fall. Number six, the actors aren't recording until next week. The next one, number seven, the house wasn't being used by the owners during the winter. Number eight, the makeup artist has transformed the actor into a monster. Number nine, they hadn't owned the company for a very long before they went bankrupt. Number 10, the photo was taken by my husband on the balcony of our hotel. Okay, the first one was a breathe. It was easy. Next one, number one. That they subtitle a lot of foreign movies. A lot of foreign movies are subtitled. That's the passive report speech. Number two, Garcia Marquez wrote Love in the Time of Clora. Love in the Time of Clora was written by Garcia Marquez. Number three, someone is repairing my laptop. Let's make it passive. My laptop is being repaired by someone. Number four, they haven't released the DVD of the movie yet. The DVD of the movie hasn't been released yet. Number five, they won't finish the movie until the spring. The movie won't be finished until the spring. Number six, you have to pick up the tickets from the box office. The tickets have to be picked up from the box office. Number seven, 
they hadn't told the actor about the changes in the script. The actor hadn't been told about the changes in the script. Number eight, James Cameron directed Avatar. Avatar was directed by James Cameron. Number nine, they've already recorded the soundtrack. The soundtrack has already been recorded. Number 10, they were interviewing the director about the movie. The director was being interviewed about the film. And that's all there is to it. Part three, pronunciation. Sentence stress. My friends, I need you to listen and write the stressed words in the large pink rectangles. So listen and write the sentences and mark the stressed words. That's easier, isn't it? Let's do it. Let's do it together, me and you. 3.32 1. The movie is based on a famous book. 2. The house was built in the 16th century. 3. The castle has been visited by thousands of tourists. 4. The tower was designed by a famous architect. 5. Where is it being filmed? 6. Who was it written by? All right, great. Now, everybody, look at the stressed words and try to read the sentences as many times as possible so that you can learn it by heart. Let's move. Well, I gotta tell you, you're awesome. You have to practice daily and you will learn. It's like a habit. It has to happen every day. Part four. Vocabulary. Movies. First, everyone... Look at some extracts from the text in one. What do you think the highlighted phrases mean? For example, number one, Cortland Alley has been used for almost all the alley scenes in movies and TV series that are set in New York. What does it mean, are set in? Or, these scenes are based on real-life events. Or number three, both the interior and exterior scenes were shot in and around the castle itself. You can use Google search to help you, okay, or you can ask your friends. Let's check their meaning. Are set in, it means took place, the action happened in. Based on, what does it mean based on? It means to make these scenes that the, uh, and use the details from the real life. So they happened in real life. And the last one, were shot, were filmed by the camera. And we have some applications, for example, in shot, or uh, that uh, the name of shot is taken from the camera shot. Very good, you did great, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's go. Everybody, I need you to look at the photos. These are genres of movies, the kinds of movies. For example, number one, it's a drama. Take your time and match the movies with their genres. This is your gig. I'm going to wait for you. Very good. If you have done it, I need you to listen and check. Let's go. 3.33 Movies. Kinds of movies. 5. An action movie. 3. An animated movie. 12. A comedy. 1. A drama. 11. A historical movie. 6. A horror movie. 2. A musical. 10. A romantic comedy. 9. A science fiction movie. 7. A thriller. 4. A war movie. 8. A western. A western. That's my favorite movie, Jean. Now, everybody, 
Think of a famous movie for each genre. Okay, now what kind of movie is often funny, violent, exciting, scary, or moving? What kind of movies do you like or you don't like? And you should say, why? Alright, movie and film. Movie and film mean the same. The film is more common in British English and movie in American. But let's not get far. I have these questions for you. I need you to speak to your friends about your favorite movie and what kind of movie is often funny, violent, I told you. Cover these questions. Speak. Great. Now, people and things. Match the nouns and definitions. For example, cast. Cast all the people who act in a movie. Take your time and match the words with their definitions. Now, as always, I need you to listen and check. 3.34 People and Things 1. Cast 2. Star 3. Soundtrack 4. Plot 5. Scene 6. Audience 7. Sequel 8. Special effects 9. Script 10. Extra 11. Subtitles 12. Review Great! Now I need you to write sentences with each of these new words. You got it. One more exercise for you. Verbs and phrases. Everyone match the sentences 1 to 6 with sentences A to F. Take your time. Do it yourself. You have all the time in the world. You can stop the video. You can check it with your friends. Do it together. Now, I need you to listen and check. 3.35 Verbs and Phrases 1. B It was directed by Tate Taylor. He was the director. 2. D It was dubbed into other languages. The voices of foreign actors were used. 3. C. Viola Davis played the part of Abilene Clark. This was her role in the movie. 4. A. The movie is set in Mississippi in the U.S. during the 1960s. It was situated in that place at that time. 5. E. It is based on the novel of the same name by Catherine Stockett. It was an adaptation of the book. 6. F. It was shot on location in Greenwood, Mississippi. It was filmed in the real place, not in a studio. Great. That was awesome. Now, everybody, I need you to explain the difference between these pairs of words and phrases. For example, what's a plot and what's a script? Number two, a horror movie and a thriller. Number three, a musical and a soundtrack. And the last one, the main cast and the extras. And one more thing, be on. Be on means being shown on TV. What's on TV tonight? Okay, take your time. You can use Google search or your dictionary and tell me the differences. 12 seconds later. All right, now let's cover the differences together. A plot, the series of events that form the story of a movie. A script, a written text of a movie. Number two, a horror movie, a type of movie that is designed to frighten people. A thriller, a movie with an exciting story, especially about crime. A musical, a movie in which part of, part of or all of the story is told using songs and often dancing. A soundtrack, some of the music and sometimes some speech. From a movie or musical that is on CD, the internet, 
etc. for people to buy. Number four, the main cast, the most important people who act in a movie and the extras, people who are employed to play a very small part in a movie, usually as a part of a crowd. All right, you did great. All the way to part five, the interview. Everyone, read the movie interview and think about your answers and reasons. So first, read it and write your answers. In fact, let's read it together. Can you think of a movie that was incredibly funny, had a very sad ending, put you to sleep, made you feel good, you have seen several times, made you buy the soundtrack? Do you prefer seeing movies at home or in a movie theater? Seeing American movies, seeing other foreign movies, seeing movies from your country, or seeing foreign movies dubbed or with subtitles? And number three, Tell me about a really good movie that you have seen this year. What kind of movie is it? Is it based on a book or on real events? Where and when it is set? Who's in it? Who is it directed by? Does it have a good plot? Does it have a good soundtrack? Why did you like it? All right, you know the drill. Speak with your friends. Compare your answers. Exchange your ideas. You're very smart. And here we are, part six, speaking and listening. Look at the images from some famous movies. What kinds of movies are they? I'm talking about the genre. Have you seen any of them? What are they about? What do you think they have in common? All right, take your time, speak with your friends. You can use Google to help you and at least write the genre. Six and a half hours later. All right, very good. So War Horse, I think it's drama and war genre. Okay, next one, ET, drama and science fiction. Minority Report, action, thriller, science fiction. Catch me if you can, drama and comedy. And it's a very good movie, I really recommend it. And Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, of course, it's an action movie. You did great. And now, everyone, look at the pictures. What do you see? Hmm, Steven Spielberg, yeah? And Dagmara Wolkwitz. Wolkwitz, it's a, I think, Polish name, who worked as an interpreter on one of his movies. Now, you and your friend, answer the questions. I have one, two, three, four questions. Look at the questions and write your answers. Take your time. Now, I need you to listen to the first part of an interview with Dagmara and check your answers to B1 and 2. The first question and the second question. Let's do it. 3.36 So tell me, how did you get involved in the movie, Dagmara? Well, as you probably know, Schindler's List was shot in Kraków, in Poland, um, which is where I live. I was a university student at the time, studying English. And the film company set up their production office here three months before they started shooting the film and I got a job there as a production assistant preparing and translating documents and the script. But how did you get the job as Steven Spielberg's interpreter? Well, it was a complete coincidence. Just before the shooting started, um, there was a big party in one of the hotels in Kraków for all the actors and the film crew and I was invited too. When I arrived at the party, the Polish producer of the film came up to me and said, the woman who was going to interpret for Steven Spielberg can't come, so we need you to interpret his opening speech. How did you feel about that? I couldn't believe it. I was just a student. I had no experience of interpreting, and now I was going to speak in front of hundreds of people. I was so nervous that I drank a couple of glasses of champagne to give myself courage. Um, I must have done a pretty good job though, because soon afterwards Spielberg came up to me to say thank you and then he said, I'd like you to be my interpreter for the whole film. 
I was so stunned, I had to pinch myself to believe that this was happening to me. All right, very good. So, where do you think they are? Actually, they are on a movie set in Poland. And which Spielberg movie do you think was being made? Of course, the movie is Schindler's, Schindler's List. It's a very good movie. I've watched it a couple of times. I don't want to spoil it. Go watch it yourself. All right, very good. Now, I need you to listen again one more time and mark the sentences true or false. All right, you know the drill. Take your time and do it. 3.36 So tell me, how did you get involved in the movie, Dagmara? Well, as you probably know, Schindler's List was shot in Kraków in Poland, um, which is where I live. I was a university student at the time, studying English. And the film company set up their production office here three months before they started shooting the film. And I got a job there as a production assistant, preparing and translating documents and the script. But how did you get the job as Steven Spielberg's interpreter? Well, it was a complete coincidence. Just before the shooting started, um, there was a big party in one of the hotels in Kraków for all the actors and the film crew, and I was invited too. When I arrived at the party, the Polish producer of the film came up to me and said, the woman who was going to interpret for Steven Spielberg can't come, so we need you to interpret his opening speech. How did you feel about that? I couldn't believe it. I was just a student. I had no experience of interpreting, and now I was going to speak in front of hundreds of people. I was so nervous that I drank a couple of glasses of champagne to give myself courage. Um, I must have done a pretty good job though, because soon afterwards Spielberg came up to me to say thank you and then he said, I'd like you to be my interpreter for the whole film. I was so stunned, I had to pinch myself to believe that this was happening to me. Alright, very good. So, number one, when the movie company came to Krakow, Dagmara was working as a teacher. Is it true or false? False. She was a student. Number two, she got a part-time job doing translations for them. It's true. Number three, there was there was party at the hotel to celebrate Spielberg's birthday. False. The party was for all the actors and the movie crew. Number four, when she arrived, she was asked to interpret Spielberg's speech because the interpreter was late. False. The interpreter couldn't come. Number five. Spielberg was very happy with the way she had done her job. It's true. You did great. Awesome. Now, everybody, listen to the second part of the interview and answer questions three and four. All right. Let's do it. 3.37 So what exactly did you have to do? I had to go to the film set every day and translate Spielberg's instructions to the Polish actors and also to the extras. I had to make them understand what he wanted them to do. It was really exciting and I often felt as if I was a director myself. So was it a difficult job? Sometimes it was really hard. The worst thing was when we had to shoot a scene again and again because Spielberg thought it wasn't exactly right. Some scenes were repeated as many as 16 times, and then sometimes I would think that maybe it was my fault, that I hadn't translated properly what he wanted, so I'd get really nervous. I remember one scene with lots of actors in it, which we just couldn't get right, and Spielberg started shouting at me because he was stressed. Eventually, we got it right, and then he apologized, and I cried a little because I was also very stressed. And after that, it was all right again. So, was Spielberg difficult to work with? Not at all. I mean, he was very demanding. I had to do my best every day, but he was really nice to me. I felt he treated me like a daughter. For instance, he was always making sure that I wasn't cold. It was freezing on the set most of the time. And he would make sure that I had a warm coat and gloves and things. Did you ever get to be an extra? Yes, twice. I was going to be in two party scenes and I got to wear beautiful long dresses and high heels. 
Unfortunately, one scene didn't make it to the final cut of the film, and before we started shooting the other one, I tripped walking down some stairs and twisted my ankle really badly. I was in so much pain that I couldn't take part in the filming. And that was the end of my acting career. I still have the photos of me looking like a girl from the 40s, though. Have you ever worked with Spielberg again? Uh, yes. A year later, he invited me to interpret for him again, this time during the premiere of Schindler's List in Poland, which was broadcast live on national television. Before that, he had also asked me to come to work as a production assistant on his next movie in Hollywood. I was very tempted and thought really hard about it, but I hadn't finished my studies yet, and all my family and friends were in Poland, so in the end, I decided not to go. Do you regret it? Not at all. I had my moment and it was unforgettable. But that was it. Love the music. Yeah, I remember that movie. Okay, what do you think Dagmara is doing in the photo in the right? Well, she's playing as an extra in a party, extra part of the crowd. And number four, do you think Dagmar found Spielberg easy to work with? Yes, he was demanding, but very nice. Okay, now everybody, I need you to listen again and make notes under the headings below. For example, what she had to do during the, in during the movie. Go to the movie set every day, translate Spielberg's instructions, yeah? So, try to listen, take notes and use the headings to guide you. All right. One more time. Let's go. 3.37 So what exactly did you have to do? I had to go to the film set every day and translate Spielberg's instructions to the Polish actors and also to the extras. I had to make them understand what he wanted them to do. It was really exciting and I often felt as if I was a director myself. So was it a difficult job? Sometimes it was really hard. The worst thing was when we had to shoot a scene again and again because Spielberg thought it wasn't exactly right. Some scenes were repeated as many as 16 times and then sometimes I would think that maybe it was my fault that I hadn't translated properly what he wanted so I'd get really nervous. I remember one scene with lots of actors in it, which we just couldn't get right, and Spielberg started shouting at me because he was stressed. Eventually, we got it right, and then he apologised, and I cried a little because I was also very stressed. And after that, it was all right again. So, was Spielberg difficult to work with? Not at all. I mean, he was very demanding. I had to do my best every day, but he was really nice to me. I felt he treated me like a daughter. For instance, he was always making sure that I wasn't cold. It was freezing on the set most of the time. And he would make sure that I had a warm coat and gloves and things. Did you ever get to be an extra? Yes, twice. I was going to be in two party scenes and I got to wear beautiful long dresses and high heels. Unfortunately, one scene didn't make it to the final cut of the film and before we started shooting the other one, I tripped walking down some stairs and twisted my ankle really badly. I was in so much pain that I couldn't take part in the filming. And that was the end of my acting career. I still have the photos of me looking like a girl from the 40s though. Have you ever worked with Spielberg again? Uh, yes. A year later, he invited me to interpret for him again, this time during the premiere of Schindler's List in Poland, which was broadcast live on national television. Before that, he had also asked me to come to work as a production assistant on his next movie in Hollywood. I was very tempted and thought really hard about it, but I hadn't finished my studies yet, and all my family and friends were in Poland, so in the end, I decided not to go. Do you regret it? Not at all. I had my moment and it was unforgettable. But that was it. Okay. Now, here are some of the notes that you could take. All right. The worst thing about the job when they had to shoot a scene many times 
she would think it was her fault. Maybe she hadn't translated correctly. One especially difficult scene, in one scene with lots of actors, they had to repeat it so many times that Spielberg got stressed and shouted at her. Later, he apologized, of course, and she cried a little bit. I remember she said that. What it was like to work with Spielberg, he was demanding, but he treated her well, like a daughter. For example, he made sure she was warm enough. It was hard work, but she enjoyed it. Being an extra, she was going to be an extra in two party scenes, but one didn't uh, make it to the final cut of the film. And then before the other scene, she hurt her ankle uh, just because, before filming. So she twisted her ankle and she ended up hurting it. So she was injured and she couldn't be in it. What happened after the film was finished? She interpreted for Spielberg again at the premiere in Poland. He also invited her to work with him in Hollywood, but she didn't go. All right. So these are some of the notes that you could take. Now, would you have liked to have done Dagmara's job? Do you think she made the right decision in the end? All right. Compare your answers. Outstanding. And this is the last exercise for today. A movie review. Everyone, read the movie review and complete it with the words in the list. For example, The Godfather, 1972. The movie The Godfather is based on the book by Mario Puzzo. All right, so based, based. This is your gig. Tomorrow. Okay, now let's complete it together. The movie The Godfather is based on the book by Mario Puzzo. The movie was directed by Martin Scorsese. Well, all right, let's continue. It stars Marlon Brando as Vito Corleone and Al Pacino as his son Michael. The movie won three Oscars in 1973 for Best Actor Marlon Brando, Best Movie, and Best Screenplay. The movie is set in New York in the 1940s and 50s. It was filmed on location in New York and in Sicily. The movie is about the Corleone family. Vito, the godfather, is the head of one of the most powerful criminal families in the U.S., Don Vito is a fair but ruthless man who runs his business by doing favors and expecting favors in return. The Corleones get involved in a war with other criminal families because they don't want to sell drugs. Don Vito is shot and he is seriously injured. While Don Vito is in the hospital, control of the family passes to his eldest son, Sonny. Sonny is a hothead with, uh, and with him in charge, the war between the various families becomes more violent. Don Vito's youngest son, Michael, has always stayed outside the family business, but when Don Vito is shot, he returns home to do what he can do to help the family. He also takes his revenge against the people who are trying to kill his father. In the end, Sonny is shot and Michael becomes the new Godfather. I strongly recommend The Godfather. It has action, drama, and an and unforgettable soundtrack oh they are right about the soundtrack and an important message that violence never solves anything the two sequels the godfather 2 and the godfather part 3 are also good but the first movie is definitely my favorite great now everybody read the overview again or the review again and number the paragraphs in order one to four for example number one is the name of the movie, the director, the stars, and any prizes it won. All right. What is number two? Where and when it was it is set and where it was filmed. Number three, the plot, the story, and number four, why you recommend the movie. Very good. Now look at paragraph three again. What tense do we use to tell the story of a movie or book? Look at it. Of course, the simple present. Now, have you seen The Godfather? If yes, do you agree with the review? If no, does the review make you want to see it? Now, there is a little mistake in the review. So I need you to write your own review. Describe a movie and try to use the structure you see here. 
it's time for you to pick your favorite movie and review it for everybody. It's your turn. And that's the session for today. The topic was interesting, wasn't it? The movie. All right, now I need you to direct your own movie, the movie of your life. And you are the main character and you better make it interesting. Everyone, this is your gig. Own it. Make it the best way possible. And remember, the greatest punishment in the world is to see your own movie and you feel that it's so boring. Get to it. Bye-bye.